Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Abekabar kamu. I'm recording this message di uh, directly to the Malay Muslims, and then by extension, the ones in the southern Philippines and the ones in southern Thailand. After this is spread to them, then you can share it with non-Muslims in Southeastern Asia, but I'm mostly talking right now to the Malay in Southeast Asia and the Muslims that live next door to them. I'm recording this as an African-American who is very proud to be African. My origin is in Africa. My citizenship is American. I grew up and lived in the United States. I was born and lived there all the way up until my late 30s, almost 40, when I left the United States. I can tell you that at the time I left the United States, my, most of my people thought that everybody else was our enemy. We thought that the, the Latin Americans were our enemies. They didn't respect us. That they, was, well, that they were disagreeing with each other about it. That there were Dominicans who did and those who did not. The Arabs, the Indians, the Pakistanis, they disrespected us. We witnessed this. Even when they were Muslim and we were Muslim, they would disrespect us. The reason is because we're black. That was their problem. It wasn't because we're dangerous. It wasn't because of anything that they tell you on the TV. It's because we're Hitam or Hitam. I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly. So this message is for you. And it is, there is no hatred in this message. I'm not even angry. Actually, this message is a good message. It's good news for you. Some of you are bilingually fluent. So I will speak Slowly so that if you are a translator, you have time to translate the message piece by piece to the people listening. But I need all of you to share this. If you hear it and you understand it, share it and translate it for someone that may not understand it. Please. This is important. My message is not for the Indian that lives in your country, even the Muslim Indian, because I don't give a rat's behind. I don't care what happens to them unless they are anti-racist. I don't care. For the ones of them that are anti-racist, they can listen. That's fine. But they know what they have to do. They have to go back and confront the elders. They have to go back and tell their own elders, even though you're older than me, you were wrong about this. You sided with the oppressor against the oppressed, and you said you're Muslim. If a Chinese person has become Muslim, they can listen to this as well because they can be anti-racist. Notice, I did not say that they can be not racist, but that they can be anti-racist. The Muslim has to be anti-racist if he's Muslim. But for the rest of the Chinese, this message is not for them. They can't benefit from it. They're the problem. In your countries, they look down on you. It's okay that they migrate to your nations and they keep the Mandarin language for their kids. That's okay. That's fine. The problem is that they when they refuse to learn Bahasa Malayu, you know you're dealing with a racist. So they'll learn English, which is a white man's language, and they'll keep Mandarin, but then they won't learn Bahasa Malayu, and they say it's a retarded language. Yeah, some of them say this when you're not around. You may not have known this, but this does happen. The other thing you must understand, too, is that um, I don't hate them because they're Chinese and I don't hate the Indians because they're Indian. I hate racist, period. And many of them are racist, which is why they treat you the ways they do. The Chinese treat you like they do because you're darker than them. That's it. The Indian treats you nicely because you're lighter than they are. But if you were darker than them, they would treat you the way they treat us. Ask them how they feel about Hittite people. They'll tell you in many cases. The younger ones may be neutral, but the, old, the elders will tell you, no, we don't like them. They're not equal to us. And I feel the same way about them. I don't like you. You're not my equal because you're a racist and I'm not. But you, the Malay people... You don't walk around discriminating against people like this. Not enough of my people know about you. And I'm going to do, I'm going to try to tell more of my people about you and the good things about you 
um, on another channel, another platform, another way, but that's a separate conversation. I don't have to address this message to my people. I got, I've already sent messages out to my people to let them know. But this message is for you. It's an advice that I have to give you because you've been very nice and sweet to most people that come to your nations and treated you well. You've been very even keel, very fair, very just. You have not caused troubles for people that go and treat you well. And therefore, the only way I can pay you back is to give you this advice that might help you. You are gorgeous or handsome right now the way you look naturally without bleaching your skin or changing your hair color or changing your eye color. Stop thinking that the Chinese look better than you. Stop thinking that the Europeans look better than you. They don't. I've been to Malaysia two times. I spent a total of three weeks there. I've enjoyed it. I miss it. I'm telling you, having been to Malaysia two times, I've seen your families out with the kids. You have the most gorgeous kids in the world, bar none. I'm talking about you Malay folks. Your kids are the cutest in the world. Kids are cute, period, but yours take the cake. Naturally, they don't need bleach. They don't need to dye their hair blonde. They don't need to put blue or green or gray colored contact lens in their eyes. They look fine naturally. So, when you get older, Stop using these bleaching creams. You're only imitating the people that don't respect you and that colonized you. Imitating the British that colonized you and the Chinese that don't respect you now. That's all you're imitating. How about you get rid of that stuff? And whatever it is in your mind, the most important thing to change is your mind. Whatever is in your mind that makes you think that you're going to look better by trying to look more like them, get rid of that too, because it's not true. It is not. At all, not even a little bit. They should be trying to look like you. The Chinese should be trying to lay out in the sun and look like you. They should be trying to learn Bahasa Malay you fluently, to sound like you. They should be changing their names to your names. Same for the European. You know what? Really, they don't have to do these things. They're fine the way that Allah made them as well, but they're not fine the way that they behave. So that's the advice that I wanted to give you because you've been kind to my people. And they say that the Africans I've met and the African-Americans I've met that have lived in your nations have said they're kind, they're sweet, they treat us equally, there's no trouble with us. They don't look down on us. The only problem is they bleach their skin a lot, especially the women. But to me, that's enough of a problem. See, black people right now are in a stage in which we're identifying enemies around the world. We've already identified most of the Arab countries as our enemies. India is an enemy. Pakistan as an enemy to us because of their culture and how they view black people in their cultures. We've identified them as enemies. The older Latin Americans, not the younger ones, but the older ones we've identified as enemies. They have our blood in them and they still look down on us. They look down on themselves too. One of the ways that we identify an enemy is by their use of skin bleach. We've even identified some Africans, our own people, as enemies because they will bleach their skin. I don't want them to make the same mistake with you. So I give you this advice because really it's more important to you how you feel about yourself than the way that we feel about you. That's the main thing. It's more important how Allah feels about you than how you feel about yourself is second most important. The way we feel about you is the least important. But the good practical thing about my advice is that if you take it and you follow it, neither of us will have an unnecessary enemy that was not an enemy from the very beginning.
And I, I really respect the way that most of you uh, reacted to Samantha Katie James. Good. When Samantha Katie James made those stupid statements, you all reacted to her the way you should have. Excellent. She said something dumb. You all said, yep, see, <laughs> that's what happens when you get through life on looks. You got everything based on your looks and now you've got no brains. Dummy. That was the right way to respond. You all took our side against her. Good. And that's what I'm telling my people now. I'm spreading the word to my people over there in Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei. They're not our enemies. Philippines, southern Thailand, they're not enemies of us. If you're going to go and start beating up on everybody else around the world, leave them alone because they were never against you to begin with. That's what I'm going to tell them. But one day somebody's going to say, well, what is their attitude towards skin bleach? And if I can say to them, they used to use it and they stopped. Then the answer will come back to me. OK, we'll leave them be. But if I can't say that. Then they're going to mistakenly identify you as someone that hates them and wants to get rid of them. Because I won't lie, black people have become paranoid. We were paranoid before the George Floyd murder. We've been paranoid for decades now because the first people we met were the Latin Americans. They disrespected us. Then we met the Arabs and the Indians and they disrespected us. And then we met the Chinese. And at first they did not disrespect us until the 1960s. Then they started to disrespect us because they wanted white people to love them. So they dissed and opposed us. And so they'll be paranoid and I can't stop them. That being said, um, I hope that one day this recording will not be necessary anymore. And I hope that in the meantime it helps. It helps you, inshallah, I do. Because this white supremacy and, and the ideas that come with it are a false religion. And it's false God is whiteness. And Allah did not create you that way. You are a people that bow your head to the ground five times a day. And you say that there is no God but Allah. And when you turn around and you start behaving with people, you, you actually act like that. You behave with people the same way. You're not a nation of hypocrites. You're not nations of hypocrites. And so you do not deserve what is about to happen to some of these other nations. There will come a day when we Hittim people grab the Arabs in Africa and throw them out because of their attitudes, unless they change. And they might do that now. I don't know. There will come a day when we grab the Indians that are living in Africa and we throw them out unless they change. And they might do that now. There's already coming a day when we're starting to grab the Chinese and tell them go home and they're not changing so that we're going to make them go home. These days are already starting. And you are the only people that I know of that have not joined the rest of the world in disrespecting us. And you're the only people I think that really deserve some mercy. Aside from the original Americans, the, the real true first Americans that and, and not even all of them deserve it. Aside from them and them almost extinct, there's just you. You're it. You're the only ones that made uh, the only other ones that may deserve some mercy. Most of it, actually. Most of you do. The only ones you're by yourselves, really. And you are the own. That's the reason why you are the only people that don't have to be Hittim in order to marry my children. You're the only people that don't have to be Hittim and I can share my grandchildren with you. Because if I pass away, I don't feel like my grandkids are going to be mistreated by you. You're not the kind of people that do that. And that's why you're the only non hitam people that can marry my kids. It's not because I don't, I don't tell my daughters and my son, you can't marry someone that's not black because I'm a racist. No, I'm not a racist. I tell them this because others are racist. 
And if they marry someone that's not racist, what about that person's family? Even if my son marries a woman that's not black, what if her family's racist, but she's not? You see, if my daughters marry a man that's not racist, what if his family still is? How are they going to mistreat my daughters? So I told my kids, no, you can't do that, except for the Muslims from Southeastern Asia, because they don't discriminate against us. However, however, the one thing I worry about is whatever it is in the brain that makes you feel comfortable putting on creams that will whiten your skin. There's nothing else wrong. Just that. And you don't need it. You're already gorgeous exactly the way that Allah made you. To the men, I'm not calling you handsome because I don't marry men. I don't think that way, obviously, but I'm sure the women find you handsome the way you already are. So you sh don't let anybody try to get you to bleach either. That's all I needed to tell you. And I hope that it helps you. You're a special people because of how you behave. It's not because of your DNA, but because of the way you've chosen to behave and you put your forehead on the ground to Allah five times a day. That's what makes you special. You do not need to imitate other groups of people. You can learn things from them, fine, but you don't have to imitate them, especially the ones that oppress you and disrespect you because they're doing it to everybody else. But if you, if you imitate and look up to the ones that oppress and disrespect you, then you're going to look up to the ones that oppress and disrespected other people as well, and you will make enemies. That's what's going on right now. But you can avoid it. You're smart enough to. You just needed to hear somebody tell you that you don't need to imitate the, the problem people. And you don't. If anything, they should be trying to imitate you. I hope that what I said one day is an unnecessary video. In the meantime, until that day, I hope it helps you. Teddy Makasi for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.